Crash Bandicoot is a special game to me. It's the game that got me into playing video games at all. I can remember my dad playing the original trilogy on the PlayStation and wanting to play so badly myself. To say it holds a place in my heart is an understatement. With the new Crash announced in just a few months, and my ideas for videos running ever shorter, I felt it was time to challenge myself here as well. Boxes are an integral part of Crash Bandicoot. They give you power-ups, Wumba Fruit, and are used to jump higher or farther in places in the game. But what if we remove them altogether? Can you beat Crash Bandicoot without breaking any boxes? As always, the rules. 1. I can't break any boxes. 2. If I break a box in any level, I must immediately restart that level. 2 rules, 1 man, 18 naked cowboys down in Ram Ranch. Let's do it. Our story begins with doctors, and I use that term extremely loosely, Neocortex and Nitrous Brio, as they perform experiments on animals for no other reason other than to make them anthropomorphic and able to wear pants. Crash escapes, his girlfriend Megan the Stallion gets captured, and the game begins. Insanity Beach is the tutorial level of the game, so we're not looking at anything too difficult here. But since it's been a minute since I've played a platformer at all, I die to a turtle. Now, something I haven't mentioned up to this point is that checkpoints are boxes. You know, the things you use in video games to make sure they aren't too hard. Well, say goodbye to those. I pretty much have to finish each level start to finish. Any death means restarting completely. But fool me twice, shame on me. I managed to get through the level with precision and grace the likes of which no one has ever seen. And like a man who knew he was gay from birth, I touched not a single box. After Crash suffers a cranial fracture, I'm sent to Jungle Rollers, another level that's easy breezy until... well, until it isn't. Jungle Rollers introduces an enemy that I'll have the pleasure of dying to at least 50 times this run. The Piranha Plant- oh wait, wrong game. I mean the Carnivore Plants. These things aren't difficult to avoid. I just suck and get hit by them more often than I should. After reaching the first checkpoint, I run into a wall. Literally. Standing in front of me is my worst fear. Boxes. A three stack wall of them to be more specific. There's quite literally no way to avoid these boxes. You can't jump high enough to get around them, and you can't glitch through them without some sort of game breaking cheat. That means that I must, as painful as it is, break these boxes to continue. So the run from this point on has a new name. What are the minimum number of boxes to break in order to beat Crash Bandicoot? The rules also change slightly, because instead of not being able to break any boxes, I have to now try my best to avoid breaking any more boxes. After failing more times than a 21 year old high schooler, I managed to best jungle rollers with only 4 boxes broken. 4 boxes too many, but like the viral meme says, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> I know it's a little early for me to say this. But this is where the challenge ramps up in difficulty. The next level, Great Gate, is where the game starts to implement much longer levels and much more difficult platforming movements. Neither of these things are too hard if you're playing with checkpoints, but when one mistake means being sent back to the beginning of the level, you might understand why I felt like breaking each of my fingers out of frustration. This level also had boxes that I had no choice but to remove, because in a world where bouncing on turtles gives you extra vertical, jumping over three boxes is just too unrealistic. I beat this level with five boxes broken, but some of my jumps were poor, and I imagine that it can be done by only breaking three. Up next is one of the boulder chase levels. This level is easy, and I beat it first try, but something I didn't expect occurred. At the end of the level, even though I hadn't broken any boxes, the game still registered that I had broken 5 of them. Apparently, boxes that are broken by the boulder count towards your total. So even if I had found a way to glitch through every single box up to this point, there would have been no way for me to avoid breaking boxes. This level is the sole reason that this challenge can never be completed. Crash heads to the river in the next level, upstream. 
a level that isn't too deep with boxes, but has more than enough enemies to make getting through the whole thing worse than an unskippable ad. But that didn't stop me, because this video helps pay my rent. I managed to clear the whole level with zero boxes broken. After popping Papu Papu, me and my marsupial mate head to Rolling Stones, a Jungle Rollers ripoff level. This level immediately decides to be a pain in my ass by not only including Little Shop of Horrors over here, but by also putting a box wall behind it. Aside from dying to Audrey 2, I managed to clear the level without too many hiccups. I clear the level with only one box being added to my total. Hogwild is the next level and simply put, I was here for a while. After playing the level enough times, I learned that the route is predetermined, so there's only one route to get to the end. The problem was, every time I got through all the obstacles, I would hit a box, and every time I avoided a box, I would run into a man with a shield and almost cry. But like I said, there's a predetermined route to finish, so after I learned which ways I needed to go, I finally broke through, and did so without a single box smashed. Somehow this game makes it a point to make each victory short lived though, because the next level was basically just hell incarnate. Native Fortress. Native Fortress. If you guys need to use the restroom or anything, now's the time to do it, because we'll be here for a minute, or 10, or an hour, maybe a year. Native Fortress is one of the longest levels in the game. It's chock full of enemies, tough jumps, and obstacles that require some pretty specific timing. Again, this wouldn't be too hard if I had checkpoints, but because I'm not Roddy Rich and I can't hit a lick on the box, I'm stuck with doing this level from beginning to end every time until I beat it. Out of 33 levels in the game, only two levels took more than an hour to beat. Native Fortress was the first, and it took me two full hours to do. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked. Piranha Man, Hard Jumps, Shield Man, Hot Ass Fire, Obtuse, Rubber Goose, Green Moose, Guava Juice, Monkey. On top of that, there were some boxes that I couldn't avoid breaking. So by the time I even beat this behemoth, I felt little satisfaction. Thankfully, I got a pretty good break with the next few levels. Up the creek is like upstream, and I breeze by it only breaking five unavoidable boxes. After that was the boss fight with Ripper Roo, which makes me break TNT boxes in order to maintain marsupial supremacy. There's no counter for these in this level, but I'll add them to the total anyway. The Lost City was another frustratingly long level, but due to my traumatic experiences with Native Fortress, I had been hardened, no longer naive to the atrocities of war. The level did, however, introduce another enemy that I'll be talking about when I go to my next therapy session. These damn ass iguana lizard things jump and set patterns to always match where you're going. Any four year old with an understanding of how patterns work could figure it out pretty quick, but I have the mental capacity of a leaky faucet, so it took me a bit. After beating the lost city with no boxes broken like the champion of gaming I am, I speed run through temple ruins breaking only one box in the process. Hey everyone, did you know that subscribing is free on YouTube and also makes me look way more clouded than I actually am? If you're enjoying my content, subscribing to my YouTube is the best way to never miss a new video. Only 16% of my viewers are actually subscribers and your boy would like to make this job a permanent one. Thanks in advance and let's get back to it. Road to Nowhere was the next level in the game the first bridge level in the game, and the bane of my entire existence. I call this level Cats the Movie, because I didn't understand what was going on, it sucked to get through, and it took way too long to get through it. The over the top third person view, combined with extremely tricky jumps for long stretches of time, makes for some of the most infuriating gameplay I've ever experienced. And the fact that every single time I died I had to go back to the very start, made this a Sisyphean nightmare. The worst part was the very end, when I needed to bounce on a turtle in order to make the jump necessary to reach the end. It's a very precise jump, and with the end of the level literally right after it, failing it was especially painful. It took me two and a half hours, three broken boxes, and 176 lives to get through the crucible. I wanted to quit after this, but after such a monumental feat, 
I had no choice but to press on. With the two hardest levels done, I start to really find my groove. I get through Boulder Dash on the first try, and I glide through Sunset Vista, another long level, in only five tries and three boxes. After that was Koala Kong, a simple boss that I got through with no broken boxes. Even Heavy Machinery, one of the harder levels in the game, didn't give me too much trouble. I managed to roll through the robot turtles and hot pipes and avoided all but three boxes. Cortex Power was another easy level, primarily due to the fact that it was shorter and there weren't that many boxes blocking my progress. I was going to clear the level without breaking a single box, but the ending required me to jump off of one of them to finish. But considering the collateral damage I've racked up to this point, I doubt it matters. Generator Room is next, and it's a pretty straightforward level. Outside of a checkpoint that I can't avoid, and a three stack of boxes I had to break to continue, the level posed no threat. Toxic Waste is one of the shortest levels in the game, but holy hell is it annoying. There's really no issue with boxes here, as most can be avoided, but these Al Capone looking rat dickheads will spam barrels at you like we're playing Donkey Kong. They aren't hard to avoid at first, but it's like I always say, everybody gangster to the barrel start bouncing. I lost both my lives and my patience as I had to deal with barrels hitting 40 inch verticals and posterizing me over and over again. Once those were out of the way though, the run was simple and I cleared the level with no boxes broken. After dealing with the rat mafia dawn, I headed to the high road, considered by most to be the hardest level in the game. Fortunately for me however, I found out about the speedrun strat of jumping onto the bridge ropes on the side. This makes the level a cakewalk. After the high road comes Slippery Climb, effectively becoming the Kobe and Shaq of hard ass levels. Slippery Climb is incredibly long and focuses on timed jumps. I can't tell you how many times I died because I missed time to jump, slipped off three other platforms, and fell to my death on this level alone. Outside of the difficult jumps, this level is surprisingly scarce on boxes, and they're pretty easy to avoid. So when I finally managed to reach the end, I did so without even looking in a box's direction. Next up is Lights Out, and this level breaks the game for me. Aku Aku is your only source of light in this level, and in order to refresh Aku Aku, I need to break boxes. At first I tried to go as fast as possible to reach the end of the level, but I quickly learned that I'm very much like the anime Death Note, because I need light. Outside of the boxes with Aku Aku, there isn't too much of a challenge in this level, as the light is the only gimmick. I'd like to try this level again someday without light, but for now I'll press onward. Jaws of Darkness follows a similar theme from Temple Ruins, and outside a few unavoidable boxes like this checkpoint, there really isn't much to say about it. Castle Machinery is the last long level before the final bosses, and it was also one of the hardest. There are monsters everywhere, precise jumps and movements that need to be made, environmental traps, and even a few areas that mess with your depth perception. There's also an area where you have to jump on these boxes in order to advance, further acknowledging the futility of this challenge. It took some serious memorization in order to get all the way through this level, but when I finally reached the end, only 4 of the 27 boxes had been broken. Next up is Nitrous Brio, who was probably the hardest boss I fought in the game. And he was only hard because I couldn't hit his dumbass head whenever I jumped. Other than that, it was free. After him is the Lab, which is another straightforward level. There's a few boxes you need to break in order to open a door in this level, but for some reason, when I reached the end of the level, the game said I had broken 7 boxes when I had only broken 3. No idea why, but I digress. The level was easy. Nearing the end of our journey, the Great Hall is the last level before the boss fight with Cortex. The Great Hall is the ultimate level in Crash Bandicoot. It requires the player to have mastered all the techniques and skills they've acquired throughout playing the game. One misstep, one small mistake, and restarting from the beginning is imminent. I would need nothing short of perfection to make it to Cortex. Whew. 
with nothing left standing in my way, Dr. Neocortex shows his ugly, bobble-headed face. This boss fight was stupid easy and really didn't have any boxes, so uh... Talk about anticlimactic. With Cortex defeated, Crash reunites with Megan, riding off into the sunset to get him some wet ass bandicoochie. Even though it's impossible to avoid breaking any boxes, I'm pretty happy with how I did. I'm sure this can be a lot lower though, so I invite anyone to try this challenge for themselves. And hey, who knows, maybe it's just possible in another Crash game. <laughs>